let me take you back in time. The year was 2024. The month was February, the end of February, 2024, like a week ago. I was slaving away on my latest video, which is coming along very well. Thanks for asking. Here's a preview. <laughs> That's from my first take. I've got to do another take. It was a bit weak. It wasn't my best work. But that Arctic Monkeys video is hard to follow. But then I had to make this video because I just read a great sci-fi book. It's about some mysterious event happening to the sun and the actions that humanity takes trying to understand and stop what's happening. And the narrative is split between two timelines, one in the present and one in the past at the start of the disaster. Kind of rhymes, past, disaster. And as you can tell by the title of this video, the name of that book is say it with me here spin by robert charles wilson great book it gets my seal of approval i never intended to make a video talking about books or a video just slagging something off for six or seven minutes but i was watching two to ramble great channel by the way that also gets my seal of approval and one of the hosts said that project hail mary by andy weir is the best modern sci-fi book going which when i read it about a year ago i had a very different experience with and for me it's not just the worst modern sci-fi book out there. It's not just the worst sci-fi book out there. It's not just the worst fi book out there. It's in the running for the worst book out there. And the reason I made this video is because I can't find anyone else that shares this opinion with me. Everyone loves this book. And if you haven't read it, you, you'll probably love it. So you should read it. I just want to know that there's one person out there that disliked this book as much as I did. And this video is just me shouting into the void. So don't expect any deep literary points, philosophical points or any points about anything really. This is a pointless video. But none of my friends read books, so so I don't have anyone to moan about this to really. So I'm just moaning to myself and then uploading it to YouTube. And if you do like this book, fair play, fair play. I'm not having a go at you. Just like if, you're, if your favorite Arctic Monkeys song was don't sit down because I've moved your chair. It's fair enough, you do you. So if you're gonna leave a hate comment about how I'm wrong about this book, don't bother. If you're gonna leave a hate comment about anything else, then fair, go for it. I probably agree with you. When it comes to this book, I know that I'm in the extreme minority, like half Antarctican, half Vatican City, Ian. I'm such a minority that they don't even have a slur for me yet because it's got great reviews everywhere. Amazon, 4.6. Goodreads, 4.5. Storygraph, 4.5. The men's bathroom at King's Cross Station, 07963-0178. Call me for cop fun. P.S. I love you, Rocky. Great reviews. You should call that number if you want to know how something can suck in a good way. Because that guy knew what he was doing. Everyone loves this book. They even got my boy Brandon Sanderson on the cover and making videos about it. Oh no, Brandon. That almost makes me want to tear up my copy of The Way of Kings. But I never would, because I love that book more than life. There'll be some light spoilers ahead, but nothing too deep. Because, spoiler alert, I only made it halfway through the book before giving up so I don't know how it ends. The initial concept of this book is really cool. And that mystery of what's going on with the sun, can it be stopped? That was really the only thing that I was reading for. Because before that, there's the mystery of the main character waking up from hypersleep. And he doesn't remember who he is or where he is, all those classic things. But then sadly, that mystery is resolved pretty quickly. And he remembers that he's a smug prick. This either patting himself on the back for being the smartest guy in town or telling jokes that are so unfunny, it's actually offensive. The jokes, jokes, just keep on flowing. They're non-stop, just like a river of shit. And it smells so bad that I can't focus on anything else. Cause I'm too busy trying to sew my mouth and my nose shut. My ears were already sewn shut from when I heard the Fallout Boy cover of We Didn't Start the Fire. So I'm running out of openings that I can sew. And the problem with the main character being so unlikable and annoying and I hate him is that the whole book's written in first person so there's literally no escape from him, even the flashbacks. The only respite you have is when a chapter ends and it takes up just one line of the page so you have the rest of the page is just empty and it's got the, the page number at the bottom. That's, that's your breather. That's, that's the only escape you have. I had a similar feeling when I was reading Anxious People. After about 50 pages, I was just thinking, oh God, is the whole book gonna be like this? I didn't finish that book either, and I hated every second of it. Anyway, Ryland Grace is his name. And he's always referred to things as doohickeys and, you know, gizmos. He's always saying dang and gosh, even though I, I remember Nickelodeon and I'm pretty sure it was Drake and Josh. It's just so cringe and I hated it. 
and I like cringe stuff. I love The Office. This whole book is just very live, laugh, love, vanilla ice cream, Ricky Gervais' a stand up, Ricky Gervais in Afterlife, pretty much anything Ricky Gervais has done since extras. Speaking of Ricky, Ricky. Oh, sorry, Rocky, Rocky Gervais. As soon as Rocky got introduced, I just knew that the reviews of the book would all be just people saying, I would die for you, Rocky. Rocky is my best friend. We must protect Rocky at all costs. And I was right. Although to be, to be fair, Rocky was all right. It was very convenient how they formed a relationship and how he was able to make a computer program to translate the noises he made. Again, it's just more cringe. You could tell that Andy Weir was going for like this wholesome thing, but he was just overdoing it to death. Very Ted Lasso, which I like season one of, the season two and three were terrible. And since this book's in first person, again, there's no escape from Ryland. So if you're seeing Rocky, you're seeing Ryland. So any scene with Rocky that could be good is balanced out by having Ryland there, living and breathing. So probably a net negative still. Like buying a Tesla, it's like, you know, electric car, probably good for the planet, but don't want to be lying in Elon Musk's pocket. Not really. So sorry, polar bears. I'm sticking with the hammer. One mile per gallon. And like I said earlier, I didn't actually finish this book. I skimmed through my Kindle before filming this, just to get a quick refresher of my hatred. On my first read through, I made it to page 239, which was 100% through. And maybe the ending was great. I don't know. Maybe Ryland undergoes a huge character transformation which starts on page 240 or better yet on page 240 maybe he dies and the whole book switches to Rocky's POV that'd be great but there's no way for me to find out so yeah reading this book being reminded of this book made me pretty depressed been listening to a lot of Smiths recently so got a video on the Smiths coming out very soon Here's another preview of that. And what's worse, murdering children or being an Oasis fan? It's not for me to say. Should be out this year sometime. Who knows? Thanks for watching. And whether you agree or disagree with my opinions on Project Hail Mary, I just hope we can all agree on one thing. I'm six foot five and there's no way that you can prove otherwise. <laughs>